Welcome to today's session on maximizing technical analysis with options. I'm very excited to be discussing this session with everyone here today because this is a topic that's very near and dear to my heart. I've been using technical analysis for over 15 years in my trading and my career, and options really provide a way to leverage the views that I express or receive from using technical analysis and do so in a way with limited risk. So today what I really wanna spend a bit of time is introducing the different option strategies that I use with technical analysis and show you which forms of technical analysis are suitable for the different option strategies so that you're able to optimize and maximize the work that you do on your charting. Remember, many of us spend countless hours setting up our charts, testing indicators, but at the end of the day, the trades that we make are the ones that cause, that generate the profits and losses in our accounts, not our charts. So we wanna make sure that we are using the right strategies for the outlooks and the charting that we're doing. So let's go ahead and get started. But before we do, what we're gonna discuss here today is purely for education and demonstration purposes. It is not a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell any specific securities. So we'll start off with a understanding of the value of technical analysis because I want to make sure everyone understands why I use technical analysis in my trading. What benefits does it provide me with as an options trader? Then we'll take a look at the main option strategies. I'll talk about three core basic strategies that I will utilize here today. I won't have enough time to go into the strategies specifically, but I will give you a high level overview of best practices for each one and when you utilize them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at four different popular methods of technical analysis and understand within each one what are the optimal option strategies. We'll talk about basic support and resistance. We'll talk about breakouts and breakdowns of those support and resistance levels. We'll talk about moving averages, a very popular indicator that many of you use. Then we'll take a look at momentum indicators like RSI and MACD. Now, during today's session, you don't have to take notes because you can download the slides and follow along if you're watching this recording at trade.optionsplay.com slash TA options. So you can download these slides so you don't necessarily have to take notes as you go along. So let's go ahead and get started. But the primary thing that I want to help investors walk away from today's session is an understanding as to how you can maximize your technical analysis and charting work with options. So my name is Tony Zhang. I'm the chief strategist here at Options Play, and I have spent the last 15 years of my career utilizing technical analysis for currency markets, for futures markets, for equity markets and indices. And the reason that I use options in my trading is because options is a very valuable tool for me to limit my risk and control my risk because we can't control where the markets go no matter how much technical analysis work we do. At the end of the day, no one knows where the markets are gonna go. How you succeed with trading is how is is all comes down to how you manage risk when the trades do not go in the direction that you expect it to. And options is a very valuable tool in my toolbox in order to do so. So I'm hoping today I'll be able to show you uh, some insights into how options trading is utilized in my portfolio for trading. Now, one great way also to learn a little bit more and get exposure to how technical analysis and options trading can be merged is by watching CNBC. I'm on a show every single Friday at 5.30 p.m. called Options Action. This is where we lay out not only a technical and fundamental view on a stock or ETF, but we show you how we leverage those views using options and limited risk using those option strategies. So I hope that some of you are able to tune in and take a look if you're looking for some exposure to how option strategies can be leveraged with your technical work. So we'll start off with just the value of technical analysis because it's very critical in my work to utilize technical analysis. And I wanted to give you some sense as to why, because as a stock investor, the only thing that you really need to get right is the directional view, meaning whether you believe a stock is going to go higher or lower is really the only aspect that you need to get right. You can actually get the magnitude wrong, meaning if you think the stock's going to go up by 10 bucks, but it only goes up by $2, even if you're wrong on the magnitude, 
you will make less money, but you won't lose any money from, from being wrong on magnitude. And also on timing. If let's say you think the stock is going to take one month to rise 10%, but it takes up, but it ends up taking three months to reach your target price, um, you still make the same amount of capital whether or same amount of profit, whether it takes one month or three months to reach your target price. But when it comes to options trading, it's not that simple because not only do you have to understand, you have to pick a direction, you also have to roughly pick a magnitude and you have to get the timing right because when you're trading options you have to select a strategy an expiration date and a strike price so when it comes to options trading you need to be more precise with your outlook and that's really where technical analysis for me is a major tool in being able to do so because technical analysis allows me to forecast what is likely going to happen based on studying history and anticipating what is likely going to happen because it's the belief that history may not repeat itself, but it certainly rhymes. So it's very, very important that we think about three things when we're looking at charting with respect to options trading. And that's direction, which is for those of you that are equity traders, you're familiar with, whether you're bullish or bearish, that's a simple um, uh, outlook to, 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 to generate from technical analysis. But magnitude, how far do you think the stock is gonna go higher or lower? Very, very important factor. And it's not that you always have a clear picture of magnitude, but having an understanding as to whether or not you have a clear picture of magnitude is very critical in selecting the optimal option strategy as well as timing because you could get the direction and magnitude wrong. I, I'm sorry, you can get the direction and magnitude correct, but if you get the timing wrong, you could very well lose money on that trade. So that's really where a technical analysis shines because technical analysis allows me to have all three views on direction, on magnitude, and timing across all instruments because technical analysis, the uh, the, the study of, of price history and charting can be applied to any asset class. You can t apply the exact same analysis method to currencies, to stocks, to commodities, and you can trade on across all of these asset classes and you can do them on any time frame. So if, whether you're a short-term trader or a long-term investor, technical analysis can be utilized for all of that. So let's take a look at you know, option strategies for trading technical analysis. So today, like I said, I'm not gonna have enough time to break down all of the strategies, but I'm going to cover these three primary strategies in my analysis. And I'm gonna give you a quick walkthrough of each one, but I've segmented them into two sections. And the reason that we need to take a bit of time and re re look at the options strategies is the fact that we spend a lot of time on charting, right? We, we set up our charts, we back test indicators, we figure out where our directional views are every single day by spending hours and hours on our charts. But no matter how much time you spend on your charts and how much work you do on your charts, it's not the charts that generate profits and losses. It's your trades that generate tr profits and losses. And that's why we need to spend time to analyze, are we optimizing our trades? Are we using our capital efficiently for the directional view that we have on uh, on a specific security. So that's why it's so important for us to review these specific strategies. Now, it comes down to the whether or not you have a sense for the magnitude of the directional view. Now, with any type of trading, you must first have a clear directional view, right? You must have first a sense for whether you believe the stock uh, or at whatever asset you're trading is moving higher or lower. The question is, depending on the different methods of technical analysis, some of them give you a sense for how far that move might, might uh, how big that move might be, and other ones may not give you a very clear sense for how big that move's gonna be. And that's gonna help determine what is the optimal option strategy. So there are plenty of technical analysis techniques where it gives you a clear sense for direction, but you don't get a clear sense for magnitude. And for those strategies, it really comes down to whether you believe that the move is going to be quick and fast, or if you believe this, the move is going to be more small and neutral. Because if you believe that the move is gonna be quick and fast, then the two strategies that you generally want to use is a long call or a long put. If you expect the stock to be, or, or the, the asset to move fairly slowly, then you actually wanna sell credit spreads, short put vertical, short call vertical. Selling credit spreads is ideal for when you have a small neutral view. Now, 
On the other hand, there are plenty of other technical analysis techniques where you do have a clear sense for magnitude. And if that's the case, the best strategy to use is a debit spread or a long call vertical or a long put vertical. So let's just do a quick review of these strategies. So we're gonna start off with a call option or a put option, a simple strategy. So whenever we talk about buying a call or a put, it's a fairly straightforward strategy and we usually go out about 60 to 90 days as a starting point or picking an expiration date. I get this question a lot. What's the optimal expiration date and strike price? Well, when you're buying an option, going further out in time is best and you usually wanna buy a slightly in the money call option or a put option if you're bullish or bearer. So that's the general best practices for buying a call option. When we're talking about a vertical spread, there are debit vertical spreads and credit vertical spreads. So let's first talk about debit vertical spreads. Debit vertical spreads are similar to buying a call or a put option, just that what you're doing is you're additionally selling another call or a put against it to reduce your risk and reduce your capital outlay. So typically you would go out about 60 days to expiration for a debit spread. And what you're going to do is you're, the first leg is you're gonna do the exact same thing as you would on a long call or a put where you buy a slightly in the money call or put, depending on whether you're bullish or bearish. And then what you wanna do is you wanna sell a call option or a put option that's roughly one standard deviation away. So a, roughly about a 20 delta is a suitable strike price to sell on a debit vertical spread. So this is a strategy that allows you to profit from when you have a directional view and you have a pretty good sense for the magnitude of the move. And lastly, for more neutral strategies for when you don't have a clear sense for the directional, uh, when you have a clear sense for direction but not a clear sense for magnitude, selling a credit spread is usually suitable for that. That, for credit spreads, you usually go a little further, a little shorter dated in nature. 45 days to expiration is usually the sweet spot for selling a credit spread. And what you want to do is you want to sell an at the money call or a put and buy back roughly a 25 delta call or a put against that. Now the reason for that is because if you sell just the naked call or a put at the money, you're limiting, you're exposing yourself to unlimited risk. And what you wanna do is you wanna buy back a lower call or a put against it to offset that unlimited risk nature so that all three strategies that we defined here today, the long call or a put, the debit spread and the credit spread all have defined risk. So what that means is that if you get the directional view wrong, and we all know as traders that there are going to be times where we simply get the directional view wrong, you wanna make sure that in those scenarios, there's a way that you can limit how much money you can lose. That is how traders succeed in trading. It's not being able to call the markets correctly all the time. No trader can do that. The difference, and I've been doing this for 15 years as a market strategist, what sets successful traders apart from everyone else is not how accurate they are at calling the markets, it's how well they can control the risks on their trades when the trade doesn't go in the direction that they expect in. I can't tell you how often I see traders, great traders, uh, great analysts of the markets blow up their accounts because they don't practice the right risk management techniques. When trades don't go in their direction, they continue to add on to that, that trade, or maybe they, they have unlimited risk on a strategy that they're trading. With using these types of option strategies, the reason that I use them is because they control my risk. No matter what happens, even if Caterpillar goes all the way down to zero and I flat out get this directional view right, uh, wrong, I, can know, I cannot risk more than in this particular case, $625 per contract on a $233 stock. That is the type of strategy that you want to utilize in your portfolio. So let's talk a little bit about the different methods of, of technical analysis and there's no way that I can cover all of them, but I wanna cover the major use cases of technical analysis and how you wanna think about which option strategies allow you to maximize the work that you're doing with respect to technical analysis. So the first one I'm gonna look at is support or resistance lines. Now these are horizontal support and resistance lines that are generally speaking, most investors are familiar with and comfortable with using. Now, when you think about support or resistance lines, there are really two ways to think about this. 
If you have a well-defined range like we have here, you can use support and resistance as an entry point as well as an exit point. So you wanna buy somewhere down here and your target price is somewhere up here. That's one way to use support or resistance. Other times you don't necessarily have a trading range, but you have a pretty good sense for where support is. Meaning you have a pretty good sense that as a, as a security approaches a support level, it's likely going to bounce. You may not have a good sense as far as how far it's going to bounce, but you have a pretty high probability of a bounce. So those are the two primary ways that you may think of using uh, support or resistance. So the first one, when you do have a clear sense for where the stock currently is or and where you think it might go, that's really where debit spreads are the most optimal strategy because debit spreads allow you to risk a fairly small amount of capital while maximizing the potential reward if you do get the target price correct on that particular trade. So when you're thinking about support and resistance, whether it's in a range or not, debit spreads are best when you're trading in a range. And if you simply don't have that trading range and you don't get a sense for how far it can bounce, but you're just fairly confident that it will bounce, then selling a credit spread is far better as a strategy because a credit spread will profit as long as the stock doesn't drop through the support or resistance level. As long as it bounces, whether it bounces a little bit or a lot, you're going to be profitable on that trade. Versus if you bought a call option and, and, and it didn't bounce, but it simply moved sideways and, and the support level hold held, so you're right on the directional view, you were wrong on the, on the magnitude, you would still lose money if you bought, let's say, a call debit spread. So that's why, depending on how confident you are on the directional, on the magnitude view, that's how you wanna select different option strategies. So when we're talking about support and resistance levels, ask yourself, do I have an established range? Do I have a clear sense for direction? If I do, that debit spread will give you the better risk or reward. If you don't, and you're more confident in just the bounce and not necessarily the, the magnitude, you wanna look at selling a credit spread instead. Next, let's talk about breakouts and breakdowns. So we have seen uh, trading ranges, we have seen um, uh, stocks break out from a trading range here. So what we want here is a stock that has established a trading range or a resistance level around 130. And finally, after months of spending time below that 130 level, started to break out here. So this is really where breakouts and breakdowns sometimes are a little different because many times when a stock breaks out to new all-time highs, you don't have any history to go back to. You basically are kind of in the dark as far as how much higher you think that stock can go. Now, this is really where you have to merge a little bit of an other forms of analysis with a breakout and breakdown because if a stock breaks out because of news-driven events or it's kind of a catalyst event like earnings, those events typically tend to happen very in a fast and violent and quick fashion. So when you have a, a breakout without a clear sense for a target price, then you want to simply just buy a call when you simply think that the stock can make a big move in a short amount of time. But other times, maybe there isn't a news-related event that drove that move higher and it simply just broke out above a resistance level and maybe it's gonna come back and test this as support and start moving higher here, but you don't have a clear sense for magnitude, then you're much better off selling a credit vertical spread here, a short put vertical spread. And that will profit, again, similar to before, as long as this support level holds, that will be profitable. Whether the, the, the stock rises significantly or whether it just simply moves a little bit higher and stays above that support level, both scenarios, you'll be profitable if you simply sold a put credit spread. So depending on you know whether the breakout or breakdown is driven by some kind of news or catalyst where you expect a quick and fast move, that's when you want to buy a call. If you think it's going to be more slower and it's just, it's just going to hold that support level, selling a put credit spread is an ideal strategy. Now, when we talk about breakdowns, that's really where certain some certain things start to look a little different because breakdowns many times you have price history that you can look at as to as to how much lower that asset can break down from. So if you have a, uh, you know, and this is a false breakdown here, but let's just say you were seeing this breakdown and you can go back to history and you can see how, how much lower can this stock go, what potential target prices are there that's really where you might want to look at buying puts or buying a debit vertical spread. So especially quick, fast moves, 
buying a put. If you have a clear target price, you might wanna use a put debit spread, which gives you a very similar risk profile, but it, it does so in a way with less risk than outright buying a put option. So depending on whether you have a clear sense for the how far a stock is breaking down and how much lower it can go, that's when you wanna choose between puts versus a put debit spread. Next, I wanna talk a little bit about chart patterns, and there are many, many of them, so I'm not gonna be able to cover all of them, but I'm gonna give you a few of the major ones, and these are either reversal patterns or continuation patterns. Uh, we're gonna talk about these two general patterns. So when we talk about a double top or a bottom, that's generally what we consider a reversal pattern. So a stock that's either uh, reached a double top and you think it's now gonna reverse lower here, or a double bottom, uh, you have the same thing, uh, kind of a W bottom, and you think the stock's going to rise higher here. And the thing to remember with these reversal patterns, many of them like double tops and bottoms, is that they give you a clear sense for direction. But just because you have a double top or double bottom does not necessarily signify how much that stock is going to bounce by. So remember, when you don't have a clear sense for magnitude, the best strategy to use is to sell a credit spread. Now, there are reversal patterns like head and shoulders patterns that do give you a sense for clear direction and a clear sense for magnitude. So when you're looking at a head and shoulders pattern, because a head and shoulders pattern does give you that projection down from the head to the neckline, that's really where I tend to find buying debit vertical spreads is actually the ideal strategy for that type of strategy. Same thing with a cup and handle. Cup and handle does give you a sense for direction and a sense for magnitude. So again, buying a debit vertical spread I tend to find is very useful for a cup and handle reversal pattern. And lastly, flags and pennants. These are continuation patterns where a security is rising and then spends a bit of time consolidating sideways before it continues on that trend higher, that type of flag or pendant uh, uh, formation, you can use the primary move before the, uh, the flag or pendant to project out how much higher the stock can move afterwards. So you do have a clear sense of direction and a clear sense for magnitude. So for those types of strategies, I tend to find that debit vertical spreads are ideal. So it really comes down to the chart pattern that you're using and whether or not it gives you a clear sense for a target price. Many of them do, but not all of them do. So make sure that you select the strategy based on that view. Now, let's talk about moving averages. This is one that many, many investors, even, even I would say uh, traders who are not chartist or a technical analyst will still look at moving averages. It's fairly widely popular, popular uh, indicator to use. But the one thing that I tend to find that a lot of investors misuse with moving averages is yes, when a stock crosses below a moving average that's bearish, when it crosses above a moving average that's bullish. But remember, a moving average does not give you any indication of how much lower or higher the asset can move. Moving average crossovers can happen over a few days and simply start moving lower, like this one where it moved lower and then within a few days later, it's back up uh, above that moving average. Um, and, or sometimes they can last for a very long amount of time. Some of them are slower moving, other ones are fast moving. The thing about the crossover itself is that it does not give you an indication of magnitude. And that's very, very important when you're thinking about this because then you have to factor other forms of analysis into this because if you get a crossover like this based on perhaps some bad news that came out about that stock, those are the types of moves that tend to happen very quick and violent. So for those, you wanna buy calls and puts because you're trying to take advantage of a big violent move either down or higher. However, most moving average crossovers may not correspond with any type of major news or event or catalyst. So what you really have is just a clear sense for direction with no sense for magnitude at all. So that's really where I tend to find that put and call credit spreads are better because that allows you to uh, profit as long as the, the, the stock doesn't reverse back into its original trend. Because what you're saying here is that the trend has changed I don't know whether that trend's gonna last a day, a month, a year, or whether that trend's gonna uh, translate into a 5% move or a, or a 20% move. Um, but regardless of whichever one it is, selling a credit spread allows you to profit as long as the trend change 
uh, holds, whether or not it, it moves a lot or a little or it takes a long time or a little amount of time, it doesn't matter. You're able to profit from that put credit spread. So whenever we think about moving averages, make sure that you think about whether or not you have a clear sense for magnitude. Now, the one I would say um, indicator that you can add to a moving average that does help with creating a target price are Bollinger Bands. And you can use Bollinger Bands either as when they exceed the Bollinger Band, you're expecting them to mean revert back to the moving average. That does give you a clear sense for direction and magnitude. So for those cases, you could use a debit spread, or you can simply look for a breakout above a moving average here to reach the target price, uh, the upper band of that Bollinger Band. So that also can create a um, a target price. So those are some modifications that you could make to a moving average that will give you some sense for magnitude. But keep in mind, you have to remember, do I have a clear sense for magnitude? And lastly, I want to talk about uh, momentum indicators. So this is a this is an indicator that many of you are familiar with, stochastics. Uh, this is a very popular indicator, and there are many variations of this indicator, and I'm not going to get into all of them, but I think about RSI, MACD, stochastics, all of these, these are all momentum indicators measuring the same thing with different variations of the calculation. But the one thing that I tend to see a lot of investors misuse these leading indicators, these momentum indicators, is the fact that momentum indicators only give you a sense for a shift in momentum. They do not give you any sense for magnitude. So when you get a buy or sell signal from any momentum indicator, all it's telling you is that the momentum is changing directions. It doesn't tell you whether that directional change will lead to a very big move, a very small move, uh, none of that. So as you can see, momentum shifts. Uh, in this particular case, very small move. Momentum shifts here ended up being a pretty sizable move. Some of them are small, some of them are big, but the signal itself does not give you any sense for the directional view, which is why it's so important that when you're using these momentum indicators, as a buy or sell signal, there is only one optimal option strategy and those are selling credit spreads. So very popular indicator, but very, very commonly misused. So what I'll leave you with is just some tips that I have on technical analysis. First of all, when it comes to technical analysis, as, as, a, as a market strategist over the past 15 years, I have seen just about every single possible chart set up under the sun. And I cannot stress to you how important it is to look at price first. Use the price action as your primary and most important indicator to gain your directional view. And then as far as indicators go, whether it's moving average, momentum indicators, market breadth indicators, think of them only as confirmation indicators. They should not be your primary directional view. You should always have price as your primary directional view because that's truly the one indicator that incorporates all information into the price. Uh, you know, technical analysts believe that all, all information is incorporated into the price. So use price as your primary indicator, only use indicators as your confirmation. And then the fewer indicators you use, the better in my opinion, because that avoids what we call analysis paralysis. The more indicators you have, the more likely you are going to uh, have conflicting signals. And then when it comes to option strategies, make sure that you think about both direction and magnitude. If you don't have both, it's gonna be challenging uh, to trade or challenging to pick the optimal option strategies. And make sure that you understand when you're picking an option strategy, the relationship between risk and reward and probability. If you don't have a good sense for the relationship between risk and reward and probability, then you need to go back and learn more about that before you start applying option strategies to your portfolio. And lastly, you can experiment with all of these strategies using options play. And to get access to options play, we do have a free 30-day trial that you can sign up for that'll give you a little bit more information about the things that I'm teaching you here today. Uh, you can go to optionsplay.com and sign up for that free 30-day trial. You'll get access to daily trade ideas, market outlook sessions, educational content, and a free six-step options trading course. And again, if you want a copy of today's slides, you can go to trade.optionsplay.com slash TA options. All of that is available to you here at those two websites to sign up for the free 30-day trial or download a copy of today's slides. So with that, thank you so much, and I hope you guys have a great trading day. Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. 
If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment, and if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.